On this episode of Throwback Thursday, Coach Mastriani shares his 30-year journey. Enjoy. I mean, some of the things just personally for me is, is, is just um, the uniqueness and connection that our program has. I mean, our, our school district, we're fortunate that in this day and age, we still are able to keep like a, a little old school mentality, a little bit of like when I throw back, like not necessarily Hoosiers, but it, 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 it's we're a little bit more of a throwback just based on the great community feel. A lot of new schools now are different. They're built different. I mean, it's just a different time. And that's not to say anything wrong with the bigger schools, but I think we've maintained that that old style feeling, which I think a lot of people gravitate to. It's a nostalgia and you feel more feel good about it. And you don't get lost in the whole big picture. And what's enjoyable on my end is that connected many, many years of, of players together under one umbrella um, and one community feel. And, and, and that's extremely rewarding for me. I mean, some of the other things are personally just with, you know, family involvement, um, you know, just, just, just with my kids personally, that's been extremely rewarding on that part. And, and, and just, you know, them being around our program and, and being a part of it as well. well let, let me ask you now, because you've been around for almost three full decades. Whoa. There's always, there's always challenges uh, dealing with kids that are in their teen years. Uh, they're still finding out so much about themselves and they're changing rapidly. What is your biggest challenges of coaching high school players? Yeah, you know, you know, you get that question quite often here today about uh, today's kids different and, and, and you hear those different things quite often. I, I get asked that question and, and quite honestly, times are just different. I mean, what pulls them in is different. I mean, they're, they're used to talking in different ways and phones and many, many different ways of communicating that were different when I when I started to coach. Um, you know, people talk about how, how parenting is and, and parenting may be different today, but, but, but I'll tell you what isn't different. It, what, what isn't different is that um, young high school athletes want structure. Um, they want discipline. They want to feel part of something um, that hasn't changed. And those players that really don't want that usually have given you the answer. They probably don't want to be part of a team. Um, so when people sort of reach out a lot and saying, when I played, we, the, the kids didn't do that. Kids still want that part of structure. You just have to communicate it a little bit differently. You know, I, I sort of say that our, our, our coaching is um, some, some old school philosophy, but, but with some new way of communication, with communicating a little bit differently with them. Um, it's same with their work ethic. You know, a lot of times you hear that, well, when we play, we worked and put in time. Players today put in a lot of time. Like it, it may not be in the in, in in the areas that people think it should be, but their dedication to putting in it may be a little different and look different than it was. But um, underneath all that, you you still can get to them with those those points. Now, that being said, do you have methods that you use during the off season? Because as this evolves, you evolve. Do you do anything in that line of how can I be a better coach next year than I was last year? Or did the kids in their change kind of pull you through that? Or has that happened sort of simultaneously? Because as that player changes, you can't catch that guy the same way you catched the kid the year or two before. And that you're in a constant learning curve. So how do you how do you manage that? That's a great question. And really, that's why I've remained in high school. And that's the part of it I love because it's a challenge. You, you, don't, you don't have the same team every year. You're not looking at the same type of student athlete every year. And the challenge is building teams. And the challenge is how do you get inside and get the most out of this kid who brings a uniqueness to the table and then the next year it's a whole different uniqueness it's it's i call it like building a puzzle and i talk to our team all the time about putting parts of the puzzle together and everywhere every year it's a little bit unique um, and challenging and and i actually think that's one of my mo most favorite parts of coaching that i really enjoy that because you know i look at every student athlete at that age they all have something positive to give they just don't know it. And you have to be the first one to let them know that. 
and, and once they're told and they feel a little bit confident in themselves, they actually can can go and, and do some things they thought that they couldn't beforehand. But that that's actually actually one of the most exciting things. You know, I tell people a lot, I don't go in my garage or fix my car. I just don't do those things. But, <laughs> I, do, but I do like building teams. Yeah. I, now, I like building teams. that being said, you have things that you're partial to as a coach. So um, every individual is different. How do you, as a coach, and your experience helps you immensely at this point, How your opportunity to, like, read that young man and – see what his personality is about and getting the most out of that kid or getting him to trust you enough to coach him. Right. Right. Well, and, and, and that's the part where, you know, your rules, your team rules are the same. And, and, and I tell our coaches all the time that you sort of have to live in gray and I know not everything's black and white. You have to make 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 the best decision with with some common sense in it. That's that's the best decision that you can make at that time. Um, but then the uniqueness, you're correct, is 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 how you get into that student athlete. How how you can get the most out of them, and, and that's that's the challenge. Now, what I have found quite a bit is is obviously building the relationship is is extremely important. And, the, and them trusting in you. And we talk about trust all the time. And then as you get that trust, you know, what I try to do is take a couple steps backwards and try and try to give our players ownership and an understanding that, you know, player led team, less coach led team and, and give them ownership. Um, and, and there's many different ways through the years. We, we've done things based on different players and different styles and different personalities. Um, but you eventually, you eventually wanted to get to that point um, where they have just a, a, enough trust in how they're playing. Getting back to your other question, though, about, you know, what do you do? I, I mean, at this time of the year, we're in the offseason. I, I continually look at things, go over things, evaluate how we play, try to try to look at the players we have coming back. This time of the year for me is actually when I start to look for next year, knowing our personnel. And, and try to build a little bit of the building blocks as, as we go into our off season. So I think once you stop doing those type of things, you get caught. I think once you get too comfortable in anything, you get caught. Um, so I found myself always trying to continue to challenge myself and trying to find some new things, some unique things that can bring the most out um, of the team we have coming up for the next year. But this is, this is a never... You just left your mark. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Listen to more episodes on demand. Just click leave your mark with Vince Cortez. If you're a fan of coaches, wait till you hear this next episode.